Well, hello there, and welcome to the Pacific Northwest, and welcome, if you will, the 2023 Honda HRV. And yes, we are doing some light off-roading with it very light off-roading and that's because it's not exactly an off-roader but in this video I'm going to take you around the vehicle show you what's new give you my opinion, opinion and then and most importantly ask your opinion because I love you I am going to take my glasses off dramatically to tell you that this vehicle actually is pretty much all new and it, it's all new from the ground up they basically built a Civic wagon with all-wheel drive, but if I say that out loud, then Honda will actually pop up and come after me and yell. But it really is. I mean, a majority of the components here do come directly out of the Honda Civic, although the rear end of this vehicle, which is a fully independent rear suspension, is pretty much bespoke, partly because it has an all-wheel drive system that is not available in the Honda Civic, although it would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? All right, so what is this? It is basically a crossover or some people even say SUV version of a Honda Civic with the two liter four cylinder engine not the turbocharged one sorry guys and because of that and the fact that Americans like bigger it is bigger in almost every way than the previous HRV now I did get a chance to go to the original HRV's launch in Miami Florida good catch Nathan which is great for cigars, but not so much for beautiful surroundings because it's super flat there and we're in hill country. This vehicle has a longer wheelbase by about an inch, three inches longer altogether. It is wider and a little bit taller. But the funny thing is, is that the old HRV actually has one cubic foot larger on the inside for cargo. However, the big news and the reason why the wheelbase matters is the fact that it has a larger back seat or at least a more comfortable back seat and that was one of the problems with the old HRV is that for passengers it wasn't that comfortable now way more comfortable for passengers in the back seat up front it's beautiful as well I think it's basically like a nice Civic once again what's interesting though is if you put the vehicles side by side the old HRV and this one you will truly see the differences folks let me introduce you to the prior HRV and the new HRV. And you know what they have in common? Pretty much nothing other than they're built by Honda. And then the tag that says HRV, it's about the same. Seriously, they're very different vehicles. This one's based on the Honda Fit, which has been discontinued, and it's a much smaller vehicle. Other than the independent rear suspension, the way it's set up, which is sort of bespoke to this vehicle, it has a lot of the same components. This one is smaller, more economical, not as powerful. This one seems to handle better partly due to the suspension setup and the way the vehicle is balanced also a lot more horsepower so big differences essentially they've made a lot of improvements for american buyers but for those of you who like a cute little car that's a little less expensive to run that has that really cool back seat say goodbye to this honestly there's only one thing i'm gonna miss about the old model and it's right here let me show you this is the back seat they call it the magic back seat for good reason. That floor is almost completely flat and you're able to fit in a bicycle back here or in my case, a large dog kennel I was able to put in here, which was really cool. And part of the reason they're doing that once again, or they were able to do that is because they put the gas tank underneath the driver's seat. I've mentioned it before. The new one doesn't have that, but seriously, other than that, the new one's better. That is a naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine. It's a two-liter that puts out 158 horsepower, 138 pound-feet of torque, hooked up to a continuously variable transmission, a CVT. One of the things about this vehicle that I think you should know, the old HRV was actually much more efficient. It also had a 1.8 liter engine and it didn't put out anywhere near the horsepower of this one. It's just a smaller vehicle altogether. And I'll discuss that with you inside. I want to show you guys the front seat. It actually matters. Now, this is actually a really big deal. First of all, comfortable seat, very comfortable, more comfortable than the vehicle replaces. And I suspect one of the reasons why there's no gas tank underneath this. The old HRV was based on the Honda Fit platform. A Honda Fit, in order to make more room and allow more things to fit, see what I did? What they did was they took the gas tank and they put it underneath the driver's seat. But because of that, it seems like the front driver's seat is a much more comfortable place to be. Check this out. 
I'm a big chunky monkey. And I have a lot more space than I did before. Headroom isn't bad either. Even Roman with his big pompadour could totally fit here, no problem. You actually have hard switches, which I like. Actual buttons, which I like. A volume control, which we all like. Now, on the base version and the second level version, so on the Sport and the LX and all that, uh, you can get the, or you do get the seven inch screen, infotainment screen. This one has the nine inch screen. The screen is fairly easy to use. The buttons are on the screen. It's just basically the same as anything else. See this button here? This is interesting because it's not even on the Honda Ridgeline. It's hill descent control. You hit this button and it helps you go down a hill without you slamming on the brakes or freaking out. It'll take care of it for you. I'm not a big fan of these things, but I do know that some drivers do prefer having them and it is available. Well, it's, it's here on this vehicle, but there's also the drive modes and let me show you those. So there's three different drive modes. There's normal, there's econ and snow. That's it. Notice there's no off-road mode and there's no sport mode, at least on the drive mode. Well, there is a sport mode, but you have to get to it a different way. In order to go to sport mode, you basically just go down to S. It's just below drive and above low. Now this has a continuously variable transmission, a CVT, which basically means that you're changing the gear ratios a little bit. So it seems like it holds a gear a little bit longer. It doesn't really seem like it does much. I mean, it's not like it's doing anything with the suspension. It's just regular suspension, but it does feel like the car likes to sit in the higher revs. So when you come out of a corner, you're already kind of at a higher RPM. So it feels a little bit sportier. The thing about this car is that it's way more of a driver's car than I expected. It's not perfect, but when I compare it to the Toyota Corolla Cross, this one is way more buttoned down and feels like it's a lot more tossable and happy when you're throwing around corners. Now, if you look up ahead, you're gonna see some little trees, uh, branches, I should say, that we're going over. This is the maximum ability of this vehicle, right? Very low ground clearance, less than seven inches. So I gotta go over these things really slow. Still, the all-wheel drive system seems to be working fine. I'm deliberately throwing it through a few muddy puddles, going uphill on some loose sand and dirt, and then some really muddy, gooey spots, and it's been doing just fine. Better tires, of course, would serve this vehicle better, but that always is the case. In terms of its off-road ability, actually, this thing has some potential. It's kind of like a little rally car, you know, to throw through corners and a bounce around. I think it has great potential. I wish Honda would just let us explore a little bit more by lifting it a little bit more and putting on more aggressive tires. Now, speaking of aggressive, check it out. I'm gonna go onto the road here, going right onto a twisty highway, and away we go. And it makes a lot of noise, and it really do a whole lot, but the handling is actually really good. One of the reasons why, same basic type of independent rear suspension that you get on more expensive vehicles as opposed to, you know, a torsion or something like that in the back. So that's really good. And that has made this car extremely smooth, very easy to drive, but more importantly, if I go around a corner, it does really well. Hell, I just came out of the dirt, tires still have a lot of goo on them. But I'm able to go around these corners and it hugs them. And trust me on this, I am doing it kind of aggressively. It sticks like glue. Probably its best suit so far is that it way outhandles its predecessor. All right, guys. So I have here the official sticker. This vehicle, now this is the top of the line EXL. It's got a sunroof, it's got the high end interior, the bigger screen, nicer wheels. It comes out to $30,590. Now, while that may seem expensive for a vehicle in this class, it's actually not. It's more than competitive. And considering what you get for the money, and we are talking about all-wheel drive, and a lot of you people do agree that Hondas seem to be pretty reliable, so Honda reliability. Now, there are a few questions. Why isn't there a turbo here? Why isn't there second choices? You have the Toyota Corolla Cross. That has two engine choices now. You even have the Subaru and their Crosstrek. That has two engine choices. Other automakers are bringing in even more choices. Why isn't this a hybrid? It's a really good question. I think one of the answers is, right now, Honda is about to introduce an all new CRV, big brother of the HRV. 
And that new one will have an updated version of the current hybrid system. Perhaps we'll see something like that trickle down to a vehicle like this. In the meantime, I will say this, it drives really well, better than I expected. As a matter of fact, on the road, I managed to not make my cameraman sick despite going around a lot of corners and having a really good time. It sticks like glue, it handles well. It drives better than the Toyota Corolla Cross. And off-road, it did okay, even though it's a little low to the ground. So there you have it. We will be testing this vehicle when it's brought up to Colorado in the near future. Thanks for joining me for the Fast Lane Car. This is Nathan. I'll see you next time.